Hello to you, welcome back to the series of linguistics talks. Uh, previous meeting we focused on regional variation. Today we will concentrate on uh, social variation. As I mentioned before, social linguistics is the study of the relationship between language and society. And social linguistics studies include geographical or regional variation and social variation, varieties of language. Previous meeting, we focused on geographical or social variation. Today, we will elaborate on social variation. So, the key terms today, as you see, are the social linguistics, social dialects, education, and occupation, social markers, speech style and style shift, uh, prestige, speech accommodation, uh, convergence and divergence, register, jargon, slang, taboo, and uh, vernacular, vernacular language. Now back to variation and social variation. What is social linguistics? Social linguistics is the study of the relationship between uh, language and society. And it includes variation, geographical variation and social variation. Uh, as a, a, a part of uh, social variation deals with the concept of social dialects. What are social dialects? Social dialects are dialects which are produced because of the differences in social class. And the groups or the people are divided or belong to upper class, lower class, middle class, uh, and they speak different languages which are called sociolect or sociolect. The language that is spoken by people of high class or the Queen's family are entirely different from the language that is employed by low, lower class, working class, and in even intermediate uh, class. Uh, so the way they speak, the pronunciation, the vocabularies, the words, and grammatical structures are different. That is the reason why this is a manifestation of uh, uh, sociolect or sociolect or a reduction of social variation. The next topic is education and occupation. Again, education and occupation are manifestations of variation or linguistic variation uh, with regards to uh, profession, job, or education. Again, this is called Although the unique circumstances of every everyday life result in each of us having an individual way of speaking, a personal dialect or idiolect. So each of us have got a personal dialect, which is called an idiolect. We generally tend to sound like others when we share similar educational backgrounds or occupations. So our socioeconomic status actually influences the way we speak. So doctors, engineers, highly educated people employ linguistic language in differently from working class or uh, people with little education. So this is what, what we call the influence of education or, or social status on the manner of speech. And 
It's a kind of social variation, not geographical variation. So any change in the language that is caused by individuals' level of education and individuals' profession or job is a manifestation of social variation. The next topic uh, with respect to social variation is social markers. So what are social markers? Social markers basically are markers or pronunciations that indicate certain communities, certain social status, certain jobs or professions. Uh, instances are pronunciation of age as, as A, for example, pronunciation of O as OM. Uh, these are social markers and they basically show different uh, social variation caused by social status or uh, education. The next topic is style, species style and style shifting. So very easily, what are different kinds of styles? There are two kinds of styles. One is formal style and the other is informal style. Formal style is used with formal vocabulary items in formal settings, in formal circumstances. Formal style is employed at schools, universities, courts, and important and religious settings. Informal style, that is a social variation, is employed for daily interactions among friends in informal settings, uh, which is more slangish, is more slang and colloquial. And that is style or speech style. Uh, style shifting is when you shift from formal to informal style or from informal to formal. For instance, at a meeting, at first everybody is serious. It's a formal style. The president starts and then everybody is strict, everybody looks serious. They use very, very proper English and they're so polite. That's formal style. But little by little, the ice is broken, and then they get more familiar, they get more intimate. At the end of the, the meeting, you see that everybody is laughing, they're using formal language, they use jokes, so the style shifts from formal to informal. In our interaction, it also happens. When we meet somebody, we are, we are very formal at the start, and we say very formal language. After getting intimate, getting friendly, we joke and we use even uh, four letter words, I don't know, or we use bad language that is informal style. We use idioms, so after, the, after breaking the ice. Of husband and wife, at the start, they are very formal. They speak very formal language, they are very polite, they are extremely. Uh, they, you, uh, they observe rules of conversation, table manners, courtesy, and everything. But you know, after six months, what happens? They are so, in, so friendly, they are so intimate, they do very funny things, they use very informal language, they might even curse, and it happens at times. So this is a side shift from formal to informal. The next is prestige. Prestige is also a feature of social variation. The language of prestige. So, hi, if you speak RP, what is RP? What is RP? Received pronunciation. That is the most uh, formal language that is spoken by the Queen. Prestige is also a sign of social variation, language of prestige. In England, probably RP, most probably is the language of prestige. What is the language of prestige in Kazakhstan? What, what, is it the, the language spoken by 
Almaty or Astana? Or which one is the language of prestige? Prestige. You know? Formal language. The language that is formal. What language is the language that, that is spoken on the news, on the on TV? That is prestige language. Journalistic and very formal. The language that is used by the university oh. government uh, president or parliamentarians, that is prestige. So it's a social variation, it's not geographical, and the factor is due to uh, what language it, it is basically shows high status, shows you are rich, so shows you are power, shows you are you speak better better language, that better English for instance. So this is very value and it shows also solidarity. What is solidarity? Solidarity means togetherness. Solidarity means unity. Solidarity signifies harmony, togetherness, agreement, belonging. All of these means solidarity. So language of prestige is the language of solidarity. So if you go to the parliament, you speak the language of prestige to show that I am one of you, I am the same as you. I belong to the high level of edu to education and high level of social status. So that is why we call the language of prestige is the language of solidarity as a, so as a social variation. What is uh, the next topic is speech accommodation. So as we look closely at variation in speech style, we can see that it is not only based on speaker's social class and attention to speech, but it is also influenced by their perception of their listeners. This type of variation is sometimes described in terms of audience design, but is more generally known as speech accommodation defined as our ability to modify or change our speech style toward or away from the perceived style of the persons we are talking to. For example, when I'm talking to the speech accommodation in need, I, I change my speech based on the listener. I speak to the president of the university I accommodate my speech to his level, high level. I talk to the people on the street, somebody, the taxi driver, or the cleaner, or shopkeeper, or hairdresser. I don't talk very formal language. I accommodate, I go through the speech accommodation. I use slang language, I use less formal language. That is obvious. If you go to a cafe, downtown, and I say, I was wondering if there would be a slight possibility of me having a cup of coffee. That's weird. That's weird. Easily you could say, a cup of coffee, please. So this is accommodation based on the listener. You reduce the formality or for informality of your speech based on the listener's level of education, status, gender, age, and so on and so forth. The next is divergence. So sometimes you diverge, you keep away from the person. You, you change your language. For example, you see somebody who is a criminal and you have to talk to him or her. Would you, would you diverge or convert? You divert. He starts saying very bad words. Like, Bagara, I don't want to talk to you. Bagara, come, clear up my face. Get lost. Come on, get lost. Bagara off. So you, you wouldn't converge, you diverge, you say hello sir, please, be, please behave yourself, please use proper language, that is divergence. And 
then you leave. You would not convert. You wouldn't say, hey, yourself, no. Yourself, yourself. You don't do that, because then you would be also impolite. The best way is to die, to divert, do the diversion, and then leave. Hey, gentlemen, you are not using proper English, proper language, you are being, your language, your discourse is impolite, and I have to, I have to excuse myself, bye, diverge, okay? If somebody is rude to you, you are not rude back, you diverge. Say what, what I'm saying. The next one is register. As a social variation, the term is register. Another influence on spiritual style that is tied to social identity derives from register. A register is a conventional way of using language that is appropriate in a specific context, which may be identified as situational, as in church, occupational among lawyers, or topical talking about language. We can recognize specific features that occur in the religious register. For example, you, you shall be blessed by him in times of retribution. The legal register, the plaintiff is ready to take the witness stand and linguistic register. In this dialect, there are fewer influential suffixes. The next uh, is jargon. What is a jargon? And the jargon is, jargon is specifically the special vocabulary, technical vocabulary of a register. So every register has got specific jargon or a specific technical vocabulary associated with a specific area of work of interest. In social terms, jargon helps to create and maintain connections among those who see themselves as insiders. For instance, there are technical there are jargons, jargons for, for sport. For example, there are jargons for football. What are the jargons? Goalie, goalkeeper, offside. What else? Defender, forward. forward. Uh, penalty, yes. penalty area. Corner kick. Corner kick. These are uh, basically jargons of sport. Jargons of law. Law, for instance, is, for instance, uh, culprit, uh, judge, uh, culpable, uh, indictment. Uh, these are jargons of law. Jargons of medicine, for instance, surgery, pills, capsules, injection, mm, cancerous cells, malignant. B9, terminal, these are four technical jargons of medicine. The next is slang. What is slang as a social variation? Slang is basically more, uh, is the language that which is not standard, the language which is not uh, language of prestige is colloquial and it is informal. Idioms, proverbs, and uh, are used in slang. So, by definition, for example, box for dollar, three bucks, ten bucks for ten dollars is slang word. Uh, instead of friend, you can say mate, bro. 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 Mate, chap, dude, these are slang words. All right? Taboo terms are terms to avoid. You have to avoid them for religious reasons, for politeness. Uh, you have to avoid them. For example, don't use four letter words. Have you seen uh, the TV programs or the movies 
most of the time, some words are clipped. They say, it's can't, it can't, you can't see. Or in written, there are stars. The star is the word. That is also taboo words. Four-letter words, believed words, or a word with a star. The next topic is in uh, and social variation is vernacular. What is vernacular English? It is the non-standard English or low variety of the language. For instance, in some parts of Liverpool and in some parts of Manchester, they use vernacular. It's low level. It's not formal. In Arabic, also is the same. I've been in only five minutes. Give them, ask them five minutes, finish. So, vernacular is basically the low variety of English or any language. Uh, they've got particular pronunciation, particular uh, words. For instance, even in Liverpool, I was in, when I was, uh, there was an old man in Liverpool who told me, get back quick. Instead of quickly get back, he said, get back. And I said, is it, is it German or is it English? Come back, come back. That's, that, that, that happens in Liverpool. In Manchester, they have a lot of glutton, glutton stuff. For example, the Manchester guy was telling me, a bottle of, a bottle of water. Some, bring me some, some water. Water, I need some water. I need some, some water. So this is, this is vernacular. And this is uh, low variety. So come back, get back, uh, global stops, or oh, that way, not not this way, that way, that way, uh, actually that way. So that way instead of that way, I got it instead of I got it. Uh, these these are essence of you know some local or especially in Manchester. Manchester is very difficult to talk with even native speakers. I've got difficulty understanding people in Manchester and Liverpool because of so many you know Spanish and vernacular style. So I give you a brief summary now. Today we talked about variation, social variation of the language. We talked about sociolinguistics as the study of uh, study of the, the relationship between language and society. Give me the next step. Uh, what is that? Uh, social dialects. Education. Uh, the, 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 the first one, the next one is social dialects that people have got with the same social status, have got the same language. The next one is education, uh, which causes variation in the language so, uh, as a kind of social variation. People at the same level of education speak similarly and they have solidarity. People with lower education speak differently. So the way that a that doctor or specialist engineer talks or a lawyer talks, and they are entirely different from people with no education or little education. Next topic is occupation. And social markets, occupation also is a social variation indicator. Your occupation, your job, a dentist actually speaks differently from a farmer. That is, that is obvious. And on the next one is social markers. Social markers show your status, your social status, and your education. The application, of, for example, come back here. This basically shows that this guy is not highly educated. So this is a mar marker. Khet in, in Liverpool shows your social status, especially glottal stops. Glottal stops in Manchester show your, you are a farmer. When you say, I need some water, bring some water to my, uh, basically uh, is a social marker. Some, sometimes in some parts of England, they don't say home. They say home, get back home. So this is an indication, a social marker, probably low level of expression. The way that friends speak English, you know. Next. Speech style. Speech style. We also talk, we already talked about two styles. Formal style and informal style. Next topic is? Style shift. The style shift, as I said, people, when they meet in formal settings, at the start, they are very formal, very strict, very serious. They use very serious language, very formal language. However, after the, the, the ice is broken, they proceed to 
less formal language to informal language. And they use, at the end of the meeting, they crack jokes, they may even use pleasantries, they may use informal language, jokes. That's what, what we mean by a style shift, moving from, moving from very formal style to informal and friendly style. The next is? Prestige is also another social variation indicator. So, language of prestige. What is the language of prestige? It's a standard language, spoken, perceived pronunciation, RP. The language that is used by, uh, by the government officials, by president, by parliamentarians. This is also, this is called language of prestige, which brings about solidarity, togetherness, harmony. So you use the language of prestige to say, I am important, I am significant, I belong to you, I have power. This is the language of prestige. Next. Speech accommodation. A speech accommodation means modify or change your speech based on the listener. Easy. Change your speech based on the listener. You may converge, meaning that convergence. You become more similar to the listener, or you may converge or convergence. You converge, you keep away from the listener because the listener is using bad language. That is con divergence. You speak differently from the listener. That is divergence. Next. Register. register is also, there are different kinds of register. register. Register of sport, register of art, register of music, register of law, register of medicine. Yes? yes. Next. Genre. genre is similar to register, it's also a different genre. Genre, again, physics, chemistry, mathematics, uh, and it was not there. Yeah, I so yeah, okay, no problem. I, uh, jargon. Jargon. It is jargon. Jargon, by definition, is uh, technical vocabulary of certain, certain, uh, of certain uh, register. And the last one was? Slang taboo. Taboo and slang I already discussed. Yes. yes. And vernacular is the, the low variety of the language. Uh, taboo words are words that are, must be avoided. They are impolite. And slang is informal language. Thanks for your attention. And I'll be back for next presentation next time. All right. Thank you.